I go into a public toilet. It's empty. There's no queue. I think what every woman thinks at that moment. How can maths help me choose the best cubicle? So the first thing we do is ask, do have any other mathematicians looked at a similar problem that could help us? And it turns out they have. Two Canadians called Kronakis and Krizanch wrote a paper called The Urinal Problem. Abstract, a man walks into a men's room and observes N empty urinals. What urinal should he pick to maximise his chances of maintaining privacy? By which they mean not standing right next to another man, because I understand they can be quite sensitive about that. So, they've already simplified things. When you go and choose a urinal, you may be thinking, I don't want to stand next to that puddle, or I want to look out of that window at the lovely view of the beer garden. Uh, but they've eliminated all that. All they're interested in is, are you going to be standing next to somebody else or not? How can you minimise that? So already we've got a simplified scenario. We can build a mathematical model of, say, a urinal that starts here with position one near the door, two, three, four to n at the far end. And in fact, you can do a formula that tells you what's the maximum number of people you can fit in before they start intruding on each other's privacy. Uh, and it's essentially n over two, because when you filled every other urinal, then everybody has a space next to them and it's full. But that only works if n is an even number. What if n is an odd number? Well, then things get more complicated. And then it does depend where you choose to start. If you're the first person in and you choose to start in an even numbered position, say the second one along, then other people can come in and fill up all the other even number positions. And then what you end up with is n minus 1 over 2 because Number one and n are both odd numbers, so they're both empty. You've got two empty spaces at the end. Whereas if you've come in and chosen an odd number position, for example, one or n or any of them in between, then you can fill up all the odd numbered spaces and then you get n plus one over two spaces that can be filled. So it's more efficient if it's an odd number of urinals to stand in one of the odd numbered positions. And in fact, to save yourself from going into the urinal and having to count every time, you could just opt for the safe bet, which is to pick one of the end positions. If it's an even number, it won't matter anyway. If it's an odd number, you've safely picked an odd position for maximum efficient fillage of the urinals. So far, so good. But we're assuming that everybody that comes in is going to do their bit to maximise efficient private urinal use. What if you have five urinals, one, two, three, four, five, and you come in and efficiently stand in urinal one, and the next person to come in walks over and stands in position four? What's he thinking of? Doesn't he know that the n plus one over two scenario is only going to work if everybody plays ball and fills an odd-numbered space? Well, we won't know what he's thinking of. We, we can't read his mind. He's hypothetical. He, he may have been avoiding the puddle. He, he may just not be the kind of person that stands at the door calculating n plus 1 over 2. Such people exist. Nevertheless, he's ruined your scheme. So at the moment, it's fine. He's probably just thought, that's fine. He's private. I'm private. 1 is private. 4 is private. Everything is fine until the third person comes in. Now, what are they going to do? They have a choice of two, three, or five. All of those positions are next to somebody. If he chooses three or five, he'll be next to Mr. Position four. Well, that'll teach him, won't it? But what if they choose position number two? Especially as it's near the door, they may just be quite lazy. Then you've got somebody next to you. So now we find that maximising the number of possible spaces is not the same as you maximising your chances of being private. What other options do you have? If you start with two or four, that's no good because then the other person will choose two or four and then the third person will have to stand next to either you or the other person. If you choose the other end, it's still no better really because we'll be in the same position as we were before if the second person chooses position two. What if you choose space number three? Well, then the second person to come in, assuming they want a private space, will be choosing between one and five. And the third person to come in can then choose between five and one. Uh, well, they can't choose, there's one left. Uh, but you can have three of you with private spaces and nobody's standing next to you. So far, so good. But when the fourth person comes in, if you're in the middle in space number three, they will have to stand next to you because the only empty spaces are two and four. So this shows us not only that 
what you want for yourself privately may not be the same as maximising for everybody, but also that it depends on what other people are going to do. We have fed a lot of assumptions into our mathematical model. So how does this help me choose a toilet cubicle? Well, it does help, as it turns out, because the writers of the paper, having gone through a number of different assumptions, come out with the conclusion that, in almost every case, the best place to stand is at the far end. It's the urinal furthest from the door. Because however other people decide to fill up, it's still very unlikely that they're going to fill up the space next to you until it's pretty much full. So that's the best option. And if you want privacy in a cubicle, it's still the best option. And it turns out most of us do want privacy in a cubicle because even though we can't see each other, we can hear each other. And we don't want to. Click here to watch more of Number Hub. We will be discussing space travel, gas bills and speeding. <laughs>